So, good evening, good evening. and uh, welcome all of you to this uh, special session on Brosmed's uh, toolkit for complex PCI. So, uh, in the beginning, we will ask Liu to give, give an introductory talk about the session, yeah. and then we'll take it from there. Yeah. 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 Hi, everyone. Oh. Uh, I'm Elwa, yeah, who is in charge of the international sales Hold and the marketing department. And one today, one, Hold one moment. Oh, oh. Yeah. it didn't record. Oh my yeah, God. it's all right. <laughs> uh, I my Thank side. you. That, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, today we are so honored to invite all of you to take part in the event to share the case and experience how to use BrosMed product uh, in your clinic. And uh, as you know, um, BrosMed has established for 11 years. And in the 11 years, we are focused on the cardiovascular, peripheral vascular, neurovascular, and the relative international accessories. All of our product is under manufacturing and control by the ISO and the MedSub system. So till now, we have 40 service products and got 360 registration certificates and already sold into more than eight countries in the world. So we much appreciate for each physician for us to give us the chance to let BrosMed product to help you work more efficiently. And of course, we thanks a lot for each distributor of us. You give us the confidence and deliver the more product to each hospital. So BrosMed will just go on to provide more and more new product with good quality and a reasonable price for everyone. So I hope everyone can enjoy the party today. So let us welcome our moderate Dr. Amanda from India. Return to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Liu, for that sh nice introduction uh, for the session. So uh, basically, we have three talks and uh, a small lo uh, lottery at the end uh, of each talk to decide who the winner is. And uh, so um, I'm Anand Gandraj. I'm a senior consultant in Apollo. And uh, I would be giving the first talk and uh, followed by the other speakers, which I will introduce as and when the talk comes. <coughs> yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh, these are a few cases with a dedicated CTO balloon from uh, BrosMed. Uh, I had the opportunity to use them in the last one month. Uh, so the basic, I think the basic need of why a dedicated balloon is required is there are significant number of device uncrossable lesions, which we end up with after crossing it, you take two hours to cross a CTO and then nothing would cross. And, uh, uh, and balloon profile is the key uh, to cross these lesions. And uh, there are times when your CTO is really short or if you can get the microcatheter down to the distal cap, you can pass the rotor wire and then finish the case. But there are a lot of times you are stuck way above the distal cap and you cannot navigate your rotor wire. And that is the time when you actually need a low profile balloon to get across the lesion at least to allow your microcatheter to go beyond that point. And laser as of today is the only option available and uh, a lot of places don't have them and the cost is also quite prohibitive at this point. And that's where the low profile balloons is a game changer and it has to be available in the market for every complex operator. So this is the case one, 65 year old female diabetic hypertensive with an LAD CTO and an RCA disease. 
uh, this was the LED CTO, uh, which uh, didn't look very difficult anyway. Uh, so we crossed with the fielder FC wire. Uh, we were able to cross with the first wire because there was a micro channel and uh, dilated and stented. So this was easy. And actually, I thought this is going to be the easy part. This is an RCA critical lesion uh, with a clear lumen. So I thought it's not going to be difficult. So cross the wire. This is a normal balloon, wooden cross. Uh, with a lot of attempts, to, I tried to dilate it and serially to go down, but of no use. Then I had to put a buddy wire, then an anchor wire. And uh, finally, this was the 0.75 alveo HP. Uh, which crossed with a lot of effort. You can see how long, you can see the guide backing out. Uh, <clears throat> so finally we were able to do that. You can, if you can appreciate uh, the guide backing out. Yeah, so this was the previous normal 210 balloon, which did not cross. Here this is a 0.75 value with the buddy wire and the conus. And uh, with a lot of push, we were able to get it down. Uh, then once dilated, uh, it was not difficult to do the rest. Uh, the strange thing is you can notice this staining. The anchor wire caused a perforation of the one of the distal branches of the conus. So we had to put a gel and close it. <coughs> the second case is a 74-year-old male, diabetic hypertensive, severe triple vessel disease with left main disease. He actually came from uh, Zimbabwe because uh, he had a humerus fracture. When he was evaluated for the humerus fracture surgery, they found his triple vessel disease and they refused surgery. So he was he flew down to our country. Uh, so this was his uh, left main disease with a significant RCA disease also. Uh, so uh, initially I thought we will just stand from left main to LED and uh, that would be enough. but. Oh, du during the procedure, uh, we were not able to actually uh, get away that easily. Uh, dilated the ostium, so I stented the circumflex first and then pulled back and stented the left main. Uh, everything was fine. Uh, then there was a large ramus. You can see that was a large ramus bar YM1, whatever that was. Uh, the moment I pulled out the jailed wire, that closed and the patient started having a elevation and uh, pain and uh, discomfort and we were not able to get, then I managed to wire that but the balloons would not go. So I had to put an anchor, you can see the, it, this was a new balloon, not the other two that I had used, new balloon would not go in spite of an anchor put in the LED. Then of course this was an Alveo 212. Uh, which you can see uh, had crossed without the anchor. I just had the balloon there Then finally we stented that also. So these are kind of situations where you are uh, saved at the last minute with these kind of uh, extraordinary balloons. This patient actually first we did the left main to a lady. Next day he had his surgery for this humerus fracture. Then the third day we went back and did his RCA. Uh, Actually, I should have brought the RCA because the RCA also was a very funny situation. It was almost a CTO. So we had crossed the CTO, nothing would cross. Uh, then finally, we did a rota. Rota would not cross that segment. In spite of about 20 minutes of doing the rota on that segment, it wouldn't cross. Then finally, again, we used an Alveo 315, which crossed uh, because of the rota. And we finished that case. This is a 72-year-old male. Uh, with uh, for angina for a long time, uh, CA, CTO and left main disease. Uh, you can see that uh, you know, it was a, quite a bad left main disease. Uh, I don't know where that angiogram is. Okay. So in this patient, what had happened was I started with the right. Uh, wanted to finish the right before touching the left main because the right was a CTO. But uh, I came up to this point and then patients started having ST elevation. <coughs> Uh, because I had kept one wire in the LED, uh, just to be sure, because it's a entire left main was diseased. 
so I realized that probably the collateral circulation is getting compromised. So then I stopped the RCA and went to the left. And uh, strangely, the left mint LED was not a problem. There was an OM which had a very, very bad disease, which we could not cross with multiple balloons, even with an anchor. So this was uh, again a 0.75 uh, alveo, which managed to cross. Then the two, this is again a 210, I think, alveo, which wouldn't go. But after this 0.75 dilatation with an anchor, we were able to get it across. Uh, but uh, we ruptured that balloon at 28 atmospheres. Uh, so, <clears throat> so you can see that uh, waste, it wouldn't give up. This was the balloon at 28 atmospheres, which ruptured. Uh, fortunately, uh, this was another balloon. Again, I took 2.5 balloon, which also ruptured. So we ended up with a, quite a bad uh, uh, extravasated uh, lesion, probably it was outside the vessel, but it didn't bleed. So I, by this time I realized it was enough with that OM. So I stented into uh, the circumflex body using a guidezilla because uh, it was too bad, we could not ne negotiate anything through that. And uh, this was the final result, patient is discharged. Then I went back and finished the RCA. So. Thank you. This is my presentation. Uh, uh, we didn't include that slide. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, <sighs> so I invite the next speaker, Dr. Hugo. Lucky for next one. <laughs> second part of that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Was a head of interventional cardiology from the University of uh, Algarve, from Portugal. Welcome, Thank and you. we look forward to your presentation. Uh, where is the presentation? Okay, I, I just yeah. the presentation. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for all thank you. these nice oh, yeah. presentations. It's uh, really exciting. I hope. Excuse me, can we just? Yeah, of course. Yes, I hope I could show it to you the advantage uh, of having these two devices in our uh, hospital and our tool for complex PCI. And I think we will, will agree with the advantage because of the, their characteristic, each one. I will skip cases, clinical cases of, of the pot balloon because it's quite obvious the, the advantage of an almost non-shoulder balloon in the optimization technique proximal and distal technique, uh, and I will focus mainly in alveo uh, balloon, uh, some clinical cases. I must say it was a surprise, a good surprise for me. I, I have alveo more than one year ago, okay? So I have uh, several cases. I don't use it uh, in all cases, but I deserve the, the, the alveo, mainly the smallest, uh, diameter balloon, the 0.75, for cases where I can't cross uh, the regular balloons, non-compliant or semi-compliant balloon. I must say that I use a lot of non-compliant balloon for predilation. I only have semi-compliant just for very, very specific cases like crossing uh, chronic total occlusions or crossing uh, the stretch of the balloon in bifurcations, uh, difficult ones. So, and uh, we could uh, compare the uh, alveo with, uh, uh, for instance, what I consider two very, very good balloons like Tazuna from Turumu and Ikazuki, Ikazuki the, from Kaneka. Uh, and I had some cases where Ikazuki and the, the, the Tazuna didn't cross and the 0.75 uh, alveo balloon <coughs> did the job and uh, allowed to finish uh, the case with success. Okay. okay, so two top players you should have in the cat lab. I don't know, it doesn't... Okay, so in complex PCI, 
procedures. We need a lot of material in case of being necessary. Uh, and uh, regarding balloons, all the balloons nowadays are, are good. Yeah? But I consider several very, very good uh, because of its low diameter. And I already mention, mentioned before the Riray, Tazuni, Kazuki, and more recently, Alveo. Uh, HP and the importance of alveo HP uh, can be well described in clinical cases. So this one is a patient with sorry 16 nine years old, and uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Hypercholesterolemia, former smoker and COPD, uh, was uh, uh, ingressed with a non STEMI, uh, light uh, depression on ejection fraction with an apical thrombos, normal renal function. And this is the right moderate disease in mid part with a, a chronic total occlusion of the circumflex and uh, in the body of the CTO are emerging a big marginal branch. The LED, proximal LED and mid LED is also disease involving the, the uh, diagonal. So this patient was refused for surgery because of the severe COPD. I'm sorry, I will do it like that. CABG was not an option because of the COPD, so we decided to uh, open the LED and the circumflex in the same procedure using bilateral radial distal approach. So we start with LED and put a stent in proximal mid LED, did a pot, and this is the <coughs> result with the compromise of the diagonal. Uh, So we cross with a regular balloon, had a dissection, put a stent, kissing, and this was the final result. But then, yeah, on the LED. And in the same procedure, we uh, follow to the circumflex CTO uh, PCI. We we could manage uh, with a Carvel 135 and a filler XTA cross the, the, the body of the occlusion easily. And then we put predilated with a non-compliant balloon in the proximal part. We could see the marginal, the big marginal with a very, very important lesion. So using a dual lumen microcatheter we could uh, cross and uh, get this marginal branch with a run-through wire. <clears throat> and then, sorry, I will show you. We, because of the calcified lesion, nature of the lesion on the marginal, we predilated with a non-compliant balloon and then with a, a cutting balloon. And finally, Finally not, but uh, we put a, a or zero long stent in the distal part of the circumflex, not involving the bifurcation. And then um, our intention was doing a culotte, uh, putting a Zion stent since the proximal part of the circumflex to the big marginal. This was pause dilated with a port balloon and then did the first casing balloon. And when we tried to, to do the tap technique and cross the, the a stent, the second stent, or zero, uh, 2.5 uh, stent, we had some problems in advancing the, the, the stent. So the, the or zero didn't reach the distal landing zone and forcing it we could see this image. You can see the marks of the balloon and the 
marks of the stent. So there was a compression of the stent. This is the balloon mark, this is the stent mark. So what I tried was retrieve all the, the, the catheter balloon and the stent, but the balloon dislodged from the, the stent. The stent stayed there. So this is the, the balloon and that is the stent. So what I did was using a alveol 0.75 that could advance inside the, 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 the stent, the deformate stent, compressed or zero stent, distal to the, the or zero, made an inflation of distally and it allowed then to cross uh, SME compliant 1.5 and then 2.5 and then put a different stent uh, and finalize the tap technique and this is the final result. So this shows how the alveo HP can be useful dealing with some uh, complex and some complications. Another case uh, is a 79 years old male with a non STEMI, also normal ejection fraction, normal uh, kidney function, renal function, and presents with uh, disease uh, in the proximal mid part of the LED, as you can see, and a very, very important subocclusive proximal lesion on the right coronary artery. So we start the procedure. Uh, with uh, implanting a, a CREATE uh, 4.16 that was post dilated, post inflated with a 4.5 uh, pot balloon. And then we advanced to the treatment of the LED. The LED, you can see that uh, uh, has also a lesion or presents the lesion, the extended lesion for the ostium of the dia diagonal. And being the most important, uh, almost unique uh, diagonal, I, my intention was to preserve the, that diagonal because the, the risk of uh, occlusion of the vessel could be very, very great. And because of the angle, I decided uh, to, to treat it with the two stand technique using the clot. Uh, the clot approach. So after, after crossing for both vessels and doing a predilation in each one individually, I did a kissing balloon first, then a 2.25 stent from the proximal part to the diagonal, the proximal D LED for, to the diagonal, did a port, and then a second kissing, and then uh, a second stent inside the other one, and then I recross this, the wire for the diagonal, and when I intend to do the, 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 the casing with a first uh, a non compliant two millimeters balloon, it was impossible. I tried with a mini track 1.5 balloon, it was impossible also to cross even after the, the, the port. Uh, and you can see how the alveol could, could, could reach the, 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 the bifurcation, the carina, and it was able to conclude the procedure with a kissing balloon and then finally treat the proximal lesion with a, a second stent, and this is the final result. So this is a second uh, clinical case uh, where, I, can sh where I, I show you the importance of the alveol. Uh, to cross in bifurcation, more complicated bifurcation, to cross the stretch of the, the, the stents. Uh, third case uh, is uh, more related to CTO. It's a 63 years old male with and stable angina, uh, very symptomatic, 40% uh, of the left ventricular ejection fraction without key wave that presents um, well, slight disease in the mid LED. Um, I'm sorry, and uh, a subtotal or chronic total occlusion of the right coronary artery in this projection. 
we can <coughs> see it could be more uh, chronic total occlusion, maybe with a micro channel. And you can see that the, the vessel in the mid and this top part, the mid part is a, has a good caliber. In the proximal part, uh, it's not so, so, so good. It's a six French catheter. So the, there is disease since the ostium. Uh, and the, the, the anatomy doesn't, uh, it is not favorable to use uh, a, a extra backup catheter or a catheter with a better backup support like a, a AL.75. So we start to do the CTO with a JR4, uh, uh, seven French and uh, uh, using the Caravel and the uh, workhorse wire, it was uh, possible to advance the wire. It's not uh, specific for CTO, but it's the, the first approach uh, to, to manage, to, 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 to understand uh, and to fill the, the proximal cap, but it advanced, it crossed the occlusion, but the, the micro catheter didn't. And uh, I tried the Ikazuki one, to 15, it was not possible, and you can see I, I don't have any backup, a good backup of the catheter, guide catheter. So <clears throat> I used an alveol, and the alveol 0.75 uh, could cross the, the lesion and allow for the inflation of balloons and treat all the vessel and finalize the case uh, with a very good angiographic result. So I will skip some cases of the pot because I think it's quite obvious the advantage of having a, a non-shoulder balloon uh, comparing with all other non-compliant balloons. Uh, and using this uh, technology of Phillips that can improve the, the magnification of the stents. Uh, you can see a, a, an, an emerged balloon with its uh, shoulders, and you can see in the same patient how the port with the same uh, diameter uh, and compare the shoulder of one and the other in a in a patient where the, 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 the stent were implanted in uh, diffuse disease with the plaque. So I could conclude my presentation saying that although it's a really, really important tool uh, in complex PCI, like the cases I, I, I showed to you, bifurcation, complication, CTOs, and port, I think, consider it's the safer balloon for proximal and distal optimization technique minimizing the potential extent dissection related with the trauma, vessel trauma uh, when we, you, we inflate the balloon outside the, the treatment area. So thank you very much uh, for your attention. So thank you, Dr. Hugo for the lovely cases and the clear message on uh, these uh, newer balloons. Uh, the next. You will, you will need. One question, uh, yeah. how is the rewrap of water <coughs> when you have the balloon extended from the tent and then you also get, uh, so for what, how does it, uh, the rewraps are actually, how do I read? Yeah. So the next speaker we have from Bulgaria, Dr. Dobrin, and he's the president of Bulgarian Society of Interventional Cardiology and the medical director for the Medica Corps Hospital in Bulgaria. Uh, we welcome you and Thank we look you. forward to your presentation. Thank you. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> this 84-year-old uh, male with um, very angina at very low threshold of uh, exercise he has the risk factors uh, previously implanted uh, DDD pacemaker for AV block uh, grade 3 and a good ejection fraction 
with uh, moderate mitral regurgitation and anterior hypokinesia. The patient was uh, referred in uh, another center for surgery because of the um, three vessel disease. Next. And uh, this is, uh, but the, the, he refused the disease and uh, he was uh, referred to our center for uh, further treatment. Uh, this is the, how the right coronary looks and uh, we made an FFR here and uh, it was uh, non-significant. The non-heparemic ratio was mm, clearly 1 and uh, FFR was uh, 0 0.94. There was a haziness at the ostium of the circumflex with the eccentric lesion at the very ostium of the circumflex. And uh, on, there was uh, also a tight lesion on the LAD. So we made uh, this is the, as you see, this is Medina 111 with uh, aneurysm at the tip of the carina of the bifurcation, which uh, uh, potentially could uh, make wiring of this diagonal difficult. We made uh, first here FFR in the circumflex and uh, it was pretty clear that uh, this uh, lesion was uh, non-significant. So patient at this uh, point uh, from three vessel disease became a one vessel disease uh, patient. Uh, we made also FFR on the LAD. On the LAD, FFR was uh, clearly significant without any doubt. Uh, even DPR was uh, very, very... Uh, Impressive. So we proceed with the PCI, with the pre rotation, with the long balloon. Then <coughs> we were stenting uh, next. We uh, placed a long uh, Xion's Pro 3 to 38 just to cover the whole lesion. Next, we made a, we used a pot balloon. Uh, 3.5, uh, 20 atmospheres. And that was enough. Next just to obtain uh, the good, very good final result without any kissing, without any further uh, post dilations. And uh, next, uh, this is uh, after, but next we made even FFR, final FFR. Without just the pot balloon was enough to cross without any problem and the final FFR uh, for the LED was uh, 0.91, which I think uh, it's uh, quite good and uh, satisfactory for uh, the LED lesion. And the next patient uh, was uh, a little bit more complicated. Uh, he had an anterior myocardial infarction and um, he received uh, two, two stents uh, several months before admission. Later on, he had uh, again uh, some uh, typical angina and uh, he presented in our center with the low ejection fraction with the uh, anterior wall and septo akinesia and uh, hypokinesia of the lateral wall with the mild uh, mitral regurgitation. So um, the colleague of mine uh, Try and there was a tight stenosis, uh, you will see on the next. Uh, there was a tight uh, sten. This is the right coronary, which was okay. And uh, there was a tight sten next. There was a tight stenosis on the circumflex artery. And the colleague of mine tried uh, to uh, fix this uh, circumflex in the previous session, but uh, no device crossed this uh, marginal branch and the patient was uh, referred uh, for uh, rotablation. Next. However, uh, first we decided uh, to try to do some IVUS at least uh, for an uh, estimate uh, approximal disease because IVUS did not cross and as you can see there was a calcium nodule here and a huge, uh, this is a proximal circumflex. This is even not uh, the, even not the, the, the marginal branch. So next we uh, were unable to cross the stenosis with the fine cross. 
So we place the fine cross at the mouth of the stenosis and uh, with the several manipulation, this is a rotor wire. This is a floppy, uh, rotor wire floppy. Uh, actually, I was able to wire uh, this televessel with uh, some manipulation, but uh, fortunately, it was uh, successful. Just to say that uh, this patient was made for me in uh, during our training session on life uh, in front of the 50 fellows uh, for uh, on a rotablation course. So next, uh, the saga continues with uh, almost 30 minutes uh, tries uh, to do rota, and it was not possible to cross more than the first uh, five to six millimeters on this uh, marginal branch. I exchanged the wire with um, extra support, uh, increasing the burr rate up to 200, and it was, it was just not possible to cross with the, with the burr. And then, uh, next, then uh, I switched to the a regular wire, and this is a Oveo uh, 1.0 to 5 millimeter, which suddenly just jumped and crossed this uh, point where everything stuck at the, this marginal. Uh, I made a lot of uh, dilatations here, then the case became just straightforward. Uh, with a lot of uh, NC balloon pre dilatations. Next, uh, just Press, no, this is, uh, but uh, I place a stent there. Uh, this is how we do at the moment uh, modification of uh, pot and kissing. This is, uh, we published this uh, last year in cardiology journal, uh, the proximal optimization with kissing inflation technique. It requires uh, seven French uh, guide uh, with the three, two non-compliant balloons and positioning of the pot balloon and side branch balloon inside the ostium of the diagonal. And next, uh, uh, I used a long uh, drug coated balloon for uh, uh, fixing uh, the, this marginal branch <coughs> because uh, it was uh, quite difficult uh, to cross and I didn't imagine that I could be able to place a stand there. And uh, moreover that uh, this was uh, maybe around two and a half hours uh, from starting the procedure and the patient was uh, just pretty tired. But anyway, this is the final result. Next. <coughs> and uh, this is how we finish without any evident uh, dissection, without uh, signs of ischemia. So that's, these are the, the, my cases. Just uh, the second one was uh, pretty devastating at the time of procedure when, you know, when you cannot cross the lesion with the rotablator afterwards, the internal feeling is not very good. good. <laughs> and, uh, but the Ovel is really, really very good balloon and just it crossed probably it was facilitated from the half rota anyway, just, uh, but uh, in any case, it, it just resolved the, the case. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, this rota not crossing. Uh, no, I this is... I it once. So how long do you try? Uh, it was a 1.25, 1.25, I tried eight. Rota. Uh, yes. Actually, I started with 1.5, okay. but 1.5 stops at the very beginning of circuplex. It Even I just, uh, what I showed just it was 1.25 because I just switched because 1.5 just was taking the curve and stops there. And then I switched to the 125. 125 went into the ostium of the marginal, but that was ev everything. Then I uh, increased uh, up to 200. Just uh, I usually start with uh, 150, 
and then I increase the rate up to 200 but without any effect then I switch the wire to extra support just with idea just to take a little bit more than the angulations just with the with the burr but it was without any effect and finally I decided to actually what uh, I missed here is that I left the rotor wire then I placed a second it was amazing that practically every wire it was not possible it was not uh, um, problem to cross the lesion with the wire it was problem to, to cross with any device you saw that uh, even fine cross just was stuck at, the, at that point and as a body wire rotor wire was as a body wire and I placed alveo and I withdrew the the wire because uh, I'm the rotor wire is a little bit more softer I think yeah. it, I'm a little bit afraid to work uh, over or to, to make some manipulations yeah because we're constantly uh, worried about the bird stalling yes or jumping beyond lesion yes so when you are encountered with a lesion like that how much pressure do you actually uh, how not you not it? not too much yeah. not too much uh, usually, if I cannot uh, cross the lesion, I tried uh, several times with the very small movements. Very, sm I leave the burr at the ostium of the mount of the lesion, and I start to uh, yeah, not the, yes, just without too much pressure. But many times, I just yeah. try to uh, how to say. Pick. Back, but 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 this is not not movement. not movement. Yes, just just a small, very small movements, and yeah. in maybe maybe in 99 percent it works. But yeah. in this case, nothing work. I, I I tried all the maneuvers which I ever knew or tried in my practice. And it was a question of backup. I mean, you had a good backup. With you. Yes, yes, I had a backup. I had a, as, as I told you, I, I placed an extra support wire with the idea intentionally. It is not recommended usually, but intentionally to make a wire bias just to cut these uh, edges of the plug. But even even that does not does not help. Practically. Actually, I think that the bird just uh, made uh, these uh, cuts, but distally there was uh, some ring of calcium, and it was just too far. Uh, in, in my experience, I had several cases of like this, but I never uh, was unable to cross. It might take may take uh, five minutes. Uh, I can I usually start with 140 RPM stay there and uh, th 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 there is a question of uh, you can't uh, uh, make too much push because you can stall the, the, the bar distal and, and can yes. retrieve it but what, what I do usually is feel and see how how much the rotation decrease without uh, stop? Yes. Yeah. Before, and uh, sometimes I need to increase, and even if I can't uh, cross the, 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 the lesion with the, the burr, uh, at higher rotations I de de downgrade to the 130, 140, and it's a matter of time, and slowly, slowly, low, and then it. I changed a lot of rotoblation uh, technique for the uh, orbital uh, attract me. Uh, but this this case is not possible for uh, orbital. With orbital, you should be possible to go with the tip of the orbital or inside the lesion. This yeah. this with this but case. It, it, sometimes it, it's a surprise how the the orbital uh, navigates uh, even in the. In the glide assist uh, rotation, you know, and uh, it's it's incredible. It's incredible how how uh, it's much easier to do it uh, and have success with the uh, orbital uh, compared with the rotation. It's for me, it's a really really surprise. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Back to yeah. The no, no, no. Finished. Okay. So finally, we have uh, Mr. Wade, uh, who is the Deputy General Manager of Brosmer of R and D, who will give the concluding remarks. Okay. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to BrosMed meeting. I'm with a jump from BrosMed R&D team. I will now I will introduce BrosMed R&D principle and the direction for you. As we all know, our typical device, medical device com innovation can be developed to three stages. One is they identify the second is event, the last is implement. During the identify stage, the needing, finding, and the needing screening most depend on medical yeah, physician's requirement and uh, um, physician and, uh, observation and uh, medical um, research. And the event stage also need physicians concept uh, pur purpose from the physicians. And also the last implement stage also needs the physician deep access and the evaluation or during the medical device innovation. So Brosmas also follow this principle and during the RD sta development sta stage. Okay, Bramar, okay. Okay, currently BrosMed product development are many focus on this, this three state, three products. And the first is the arterial um, uh, uh, stenosis and the second is the thrombosis management. Uh, the, six, the last one is the, the heritage management. Uh, currently BrosMed has the 115 engineering and uh, 15% investment of the annual review or invest R&D development. And also we cooperate with 40 uh, in institute like the material science, electronic science, and, uh, and the image area. And also we have registration, have the experience in registering in 18 countries. This is corollary new product, innovation product, uniquely product like the AVO, port balloon. Also, we have the 3D pre shaped workhorse uh, well launched in marketing, and also wage and see PTCS scoring balloon or other product under the, under the development and registration. This is a peripheral area. Innovation Uliquid, innovation products like the Travage and the Tech, and also Uliquid designed drug, drug balloon, drug coating balloon. It will cover, it, it's like a cover to reduce the drug, the drug move during the, the advanced balloon. So, also, most of those products, the innovation concepts come from the physician innovative research. So at the same time, we also have the uniquely innovation products are during in process of de development and uh, registration. Also, we welcome join our team, your current the physician and uh, partner here to imply to join our team to imply your generous ideas. Thank you. This is my email. You can contact if you want. So thank you, Mr. Wade, for taking us through the company's uh, details. And uh, finally, we've come to the end of the session. And uh, um, 
சரி Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, we thank you everybody for participating and uh, thank you Brosmed and uh, Viva company for making this possible. Thank you. 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 Thank you.